Good morning. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on the BBA in Computational Business Analytics. Uh, my name is Ramakrishna Velamuri, and I am Professor of Entrepreneurship and Dean of the School of Management at Mahindra University. Uh, it is my pleasure to take you through the some details of the BBA in Computational Business Analytics. Uh, it's, uh, you know, as a new school, it's a new program that we are launching. Uh, it's a fairly new program all over the world. And uh, we are very excited to be launching it. And I'll share with you some details of the program now. So I'll be talking for maybe 20 to 30 minutes and then, um, you know, happy to take uh, your Q&A. Please, you know, write your questions in the um, in the in the question box, and I'll be happy to answer them. So here we go. So uh, basically, you know, if typical questions that managers ask, and they've been asking this for decades, is which are our highest and lowest margin customers? So take a company like Hindustan Unilever or Reliance Industries. Or Reliance Geo, for example, or Tata Motors, uh, it's important for them to know the margins that they're making from their different customers. You know, uh, they could be corporate customers, they could be uh, individual customers, retail customers, and the margins on these customers, customer groups are different. So that's a typical question that managers ask. Who are my customers in terms of demographics, such as age range, gender, socioeconomic status, a location, you know, the city or state they live in, and what products are they buying? Very important question. Which customers are most likely to defect to the competition? Um, which is the most effective distribution channel? We may have multiple distribution channels, such as the online channel or uh, the offline channel. Uh, which product promotions have the biggest impact on revenues? And what impact will new products and services have on revenues and margins? So, you know, these questions have typically interested managers always. Nowadays, we have access to very, very good data to be able to answer these questions precisely. You know, in the olden days, there was a very famous saying um, by a marketing guru. He said, I know that my company wastes 50% of its advertising budget, but I don't know which 50%. Okay. So to a certain extent in the past, managers were navigating without data, without precise data, and even the data that we had came to us with a lag. I remember in my first managerial job in 1985, um, I was based in the UK, and we set up, and we, I was in charge of a, of a subsidiary of a Spanish listed company in the UK, and we set up a management information system in such a way that the previous month's key data, such as sales, you know, divided by product groups, divided by geographies, you know, divided by, you know, sales manager responsibilities. So we could get all this granular data plus, you know, costs and, and profits. We could get the data for the previous month within the first five working days of the next month. So if we are in, you know, in, in, by the 5th of July or the 6th of July, we would have all the important data for June. In those days, this was considered revolutionary in our company. And so I was invited to make presentations to our other subsidiaries in, in countries like Germany, Holland, Italy. And they wanted to know how we had come up with this, what they thought in those days was, and what we thought was a very sophisticated management information system. Today, these data are available in real, real time. 
And why are these data important? Because they help managers make decisions. And with better quality data, you can make better quality decisions. So just some examples of data, right? A transactions data, Walmart has 20 million transactions per day. AT&T, uh, the AT&T network handles more than 300 million calls per day. This is probably even more for, you know, the Indian networks. Uh, credit card companies handle billions of transactions per day. Second category of data, you have online documents and network data. You have the web as a documentary, a document repository. Uh, it is estimated there are something like 50 billion web pages. They are linked with hyperlinks. Okay. Um, Wikipedia has more than 4 million articles. You have online news portals, you know, that are adding new content every single day. And Facebook and Twitter have 2.6 billion and 300 plus million users, respectively. So all these are sources of data, right? And then you have behavioral data. When you visit a website, um, a number of uh, internet companies know about, if you do a search, for example, if I, I'm looking for, let's say I'm looking for an apartment in Hyderabad, and I do a search for an apartment in Kompalli, which is one of the suburbs of Hyderabad, then Google knows that I have done a search for an apartment. And the next time I go to the Times of India website and I open the, the page, I see an advertisement for apartments in Kompalli, right? It could be from Magic Bricks, it could be from 99acres.com, it could be from housing.com, or it could be from a developer, right? Such as Aparna Constructions or Hirananda or Raheja and so on. So, and this, you know, this information, this ad is personalized to me. So I see this ad and in the time it takes me to open the Times of India front page, it may be only a few seconds, right? That space has been auctioned. And these, you know, these companies whose advertisements I see, they have bid for the data and they have been assigned that space. Obviously, this bidding is automated, right? Because it happens in a fraction of a second. So now things are getting really, really sophisticated in this respect, right? Um, there are applications that track my movements when I go to a mall based on my cell phone, right? Uh, they they are able to say if I if I went to the supermarket and after going to the supermarket which are the stores I went to such as um, a fashion store perhaps or or a restaurant right e-commerce companies are generating you know massive amounts of data every day um, in fact companies like Amazon Flipkart Alibaba can actually provide good data on the credit worthiness of households because they know how many purchases each household is making and how they are paying for these purchases. And Google has, as I said, huge amounts of data on our search behavior. So basically, these are the data that we are now harnessing through technology and making it available to managers. But presenting the data in raw form, right? Because you, as I said, this is massive amounts of data, right? You want these data to be analyzed and you want them to be presented to managers in a way that it makes sense to them. And you want to give them only those data that they need to make specific decisions, right? So this is where data analytics has become such an exciting and such a hugely useful area within organizations. So according to IDC.com, the global big data and analytics market was worth 189 billion 
in 2019 and was growing at double digits right it was it was expected to reach 274 billion by 2022 the indian data analytics market is growing even faster actually uh, it was uh, about 36 billion in the year 2019 2020 and it's expected to reach 75 billion in 2025 currently as we speak today nearly 20 percent of the revenues of the big it and it enabled services companies are coming from analytics companies like tcs infosys wipro um, hcl tech mahindra cognizant all these companies now are leveraging analytics to help their clients improve their businesses and this percentage is expected to reach 30 by 2024-2025. So having shared with you, you know, the big picture of why data analytics is important, uh, let me share with you some, you know, some data points on Mahindra University and what differentiates us and why you should consider uh, studying at Mahindra University. So the very first, you know, uh, differentiator I think is it's obvious. We are backed by a very large and very reputed corporate house in India that has revenues of about twenty billion dollars. Very diversified, you know, across automobiles, farm equipment, defense, and very importantly, information technology and information technology enabled services. And the business, you know, within Mahindra that's responsible for IT and ITES is as you know, Tech Mahindra, which has revenues exceeding $5 billion. <clears throat> and it is at the cutting edge of services to its clients in the area of artificial intelligence, machine learning, internet of things, data analytics, digital transformation. So these are the services that Tech Mahindra is providing on a day-to-day -day basis to its clients all over the world. And Mahindra University School of Management one of our unique, uh, let's say, value propositions to our students and prospective students is that we bring you a combination of uh, business uh, content and technology content. So our curricula are a blend of these two. Okay. So not only will you be very proficient when you graduate in the business domain, but you will have you will graduate with a portfolio of technology skills that you can deploy either in the employment market or for higher studies and i'll give you some details going forward so the mahindra group i mean if you look at uh, the school of management we are starting our programs this year but our sister school the school of engineering has been operating for 7 years now and the School of Engineering can give you, you know, a very good idea of what the trajectory of the School of Management is going to be, because we are approaching education, business education, with the same rigor that we approached engineering education with our School of Management. You may know that the School of Engineering, um, the School of Engineering, I mean, the School of Engineering partnered with the Ecol Central, one of the leading engineering schools of the world based in France uh, to develop its curriculum and to get academic inputs. In fact, uh, our, one of our deans in the early stages of the School of Engineering was actually from France. Our engineering school has, uh, I think about more than 70 faculty members, seven zero, and PhDs from Harvard, Iowa, Florida, Illinois, and many of the top IITs in India, Indian Institute of Science. So one of the decisions that Mahindra University made very early in its life of the School of Engineering was that we would not, we would insist on doctoral degrees for our faculty. And we are following the same philosophy with the School of Management. We have a gorgeous campus in Hyderabad, um, 
if you have the opportunity to visit the campus, I strongly urge you to do it. Um, and as you know, Hyderabad is one of the most important education hubs in India. The government of India designated Hyderabad as one of the nine major education hubs in the country. And it's one of the most important technology hubs in India. And in surveys conducted by magazines, it repeatedly figures in amongst the best cities in India to live in. Very often it ranks number one. The second unique value proposition is our partnership with the Cornell University's SC Johnson College of Business. As you know, Cornell is one of the original eight Ivy League universities. It's more than 150 years old. So we have been working with uh, Cornell University for about eight months now. We have weekly meetings with their faculty team and their, uh, you know, the project managers on curriculum and course structures. Uh, and once these curriculum and course structures are finalized, we have a meeting in early July where we'll, we will be finalizing the curricula. Then we'll start examining the individual course outlines of the courses that are taught in the three degree programs that we are launching this year. The BBA in computational business analytics is one. The BA in economics and finance is the other and the BBA in digital technologies is the third. Okay, so we'll start examining the individual courses within these degree programs. There's going to be faculty mentoring. Uh, there will be Cornell faculty visiting our campus at Mahindra University uh, to teach. Uh, our students will be able to do a specific number of e-Cornell courses uh, these courses are included in the tuition fee. And then there's a three-week three immersion that our students will be able to do in Cornell's Ithaca campus and Cornell Tech's New York campus. Uh, this is not mandatory uh, and it will be charged extra. Those who choose not to go to uh, Cornell uh, will be offered an equivalent summer experience at our Mahindra University campus in Hyderabad. And this is the scope of the collaboration as it stands today. As you can see, it's quite deep. And uh, we expect this scope to broaden over time. There's a photograph of the Ithaca campus of Cornell. So we have uh, recruited 11 faculty members already. Okay. Um, Many of them will be joining us in July and August, uh, which is why we cannot yet put up their photographs and names and profiles on our website. We have uh, three PhDs from the US. Uh, I have a PhD from the University of Virginia. We have a senior marketing professor, Professor Pradeep Racharla, who has a PhD in marketing from Temple University. And we have an economist who specializes in macroeconomics, who has a PhD from Utah State. We have two uh, PhDs from IIM Ahmedabad, one in the area of management information systems and the other in the area of marketing. We have one uh, PhD from IIM Bangalore in the area of decision sciences. We have one um, executive fellow program and management graduate in data science. In fact, uh, Professor Mayank Mathur has already joined us and he's on the call today uh, and he may take a couple of the questions that you ask. Um, we have two um, PhDs from IFMR, which is part of the CREA University, one in mathematical finance and one in economics, microeconomics. We have one PhD from Bits in the area of finance and one PhD from, from IFHE in the area of OBHR. And you know, the most important question that you should be asking yourselves is who is going to teach me? And the second most important question is, what are they going to teach? So when it comes to who is going to teach me, let me assure you that we are onboarding, we are onboarding faculty very, very carefully. Okay. We want faculty members who are who have PhDs from institutions where they get very good research training, and we want to see a track record of publications in the leading 
international peer reviewed journals. Now you may ask me, why is it important for a student to have faculty members who are publishing in the leading international peer reviewed journals? And the reason is very simple. Uh, research active faculty by definition are more updated with the latest developments in their fields. That's because they have to read the latest literature in order to, to be able to publish in the top journals. We also have a roster of visiting faculty and industry experts to interact with students as per need. The fourth differentiator or the unique value proposition is that we are putting together a number of, you can call them councils, boards, committees, you know, uh, we have we'll have an academic advisory council where we will have uh, uh, some of the leading um, academics from Cornell University. We've already decided on the members of our industry advisory board. Um, so we have people from uh, the financial services industry specializing in fintech. We have uh, one member from uh, uh, a company, a tech company that provides cutting edge solutions to the top five pharmaceutical companies in the world. And these are database solutions. We have one member uh, who's waiting to receive confirmation from an organization who heads the uh, data center of the Reserve Bank of India. Uh, so we have people with these kinds of pro profiles joining our industry advisory board uh, because we want to vet our curricula with them to make sure that our content is aligned to the needs of industry. So there is a kind of a two-step process, right? On the one hand, we have, you know, academics from leading institutions in the world providing us inputs on the academic rigor of our curriculum. And second, we have leading experts from industry telling us how aligned this curric these curricula are to the needs of industry. So our degrees will equip students with the fundamentals in economics, finance, and business. And as I said earlier, you will graduate with a technology toolkit that will enhance your deployability and make you very attractive you know, to uh, academic institutions where you may want to do a master's or a PhD. So every program has a common core. The common core is, is uh, common across three degree programs. Then each program has a program core and a specialization. Uh, at the end of year two, we have a six to eight week internship. So the summer immersion in Cornell or at Mahindra University will take place at the end of year one, and the internship will take place at the end of year two. And we will uh, work with the students so that they can build a skills portfolio of concrete projects that they've worked on during the degree that they can showcase to their employers. And students can also then work towards industry certification, such as the product project management institute certification, or those who want to do the CFA certification if you're studying the BA in economics and finance and so on. The fifth unique value proposition is that Mahindra University is one of the few universities in India, I would say one of the very few private universities to have its own supercomputer. <clears throat> this was a major investment that the school made um, because the engineering school is offering a BTEC in artificial intelligence. And so this supercomputer lab is going to host two centers of excellence, one in the area of artificial intelligence and the other uh, in the area of 3D immersive experience, which basically means augmented reality, virtual reality. So the model that we have on campus is an NVIDIA DGX1. You can look it up on the on Google. And it's it's been designed mainly to facilitate uh, machine learning and deep learning. Um, and we have 30 workstations. Um, our BBA students in the area of computational business analytics will have the opportunity of working on projects in a supercomputer lab. And several of the CBA curriculum 
uh, courses would be taught by School of Engineering faculty. So our program structure basically is that in the first year, you have the basic uh, introduction to, to business subjects. Uh, you have a, a course on entrepreneurship and new venture cre creation, and you have soft skill courses. And then, so these are some of the courses that you will do in the first year, entrepreneurship, uh, principles of management, principles of marketing, economics, both micro and macro. We'll do a course on critical thinking and problem solving, introduction to statistics, and introduction to finance. From then on, you know, we'll have more specialized topics, such as in the area of business and economics, we have digital marketing and social media engagement, business law, management information systems, CSR, corporate social responsibility and sustainable business, corporate finance, principles of e-commerce and marketplaces, finance too, which is mainly a fintech course, management consulting methods, because um, we've observed that uh, a large number of analytics graduates are being hired by consulting companies, strategy and business policy, connected technologies such as Internet of Things, we'll have an introduction to uh, cloud computing and you'll also discuss we'll also discuss privacy issues which are very important nowadays a course on production and operations management leadership and teamwork and social listening and sentiment analysis tools so these are the business uh, courses that we uh, are going to be offering in years two and three when it comes to the analytics courses uh, we have an introduction to statistics with R. We have the basics of computers and computing, database management with SQL, basic econometrics with R, foundations of mathematics for analytics, programming with Python, data warehousing, business intelligence and visualization with Tableau, computational statistics, analytics, both finance and marketing analytics, and data mining, and data collection games and incentives. So if you look at the kinds of roles that, you know, analytics graduates are, or I would say data graduates are, um, you know, taking up in industry, I would say there are four kinds of, broadly four kinds of roles. Um, one is the business analyst. The second is the data analyst. The third is the data scientist. And the fourth is the data engineer. Okay. So as you go from the business analyst to the data engineer, uh, the requirements for the job become more and more technical. Okay. So our graduates will be able to do comfortably both the business analyst and the data analyst roles. For the data scientist and data engineer roles, you would need a degree in engineering. Okay. So one of the gaps that we've found in the analytics market is for people who combine a strong knowledge of business with a strong knowledge of analytics people who can translate the needs of management into a language that the data scientists and data engineers understand and who can translate the output of the work of data scientists and data engineers in a language that managers, senior decision makers can understand. So this role is becoming more and more important in business and industry. And this is the gap that the BBA in computational business analytics is designed to fill. So what are the career paths possible with a BBA in computational business analytics? So first of all, you know, uh, people who graduate from uh, Mahindra University's uh, programs, uh, we have already established a very sound reputation with the top universities in the United States, Canada, Europe, and Southeast Asia. So the admissions departments of schools like the University of California, Berkeley, Georgia Tech, Carnegie Mellon, Columbia University, Stanford University, University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign, UT Austin, NUS Singapore, NTU Singapore, Ecole Polytechnique France, Isaiah Supero France, and Imperial College 
these admissions departments have already seen the graduates of Mahindra University. They've seen our engineering students, right? So the, the question that very often international academic institutions ask, you know, um, how do I know the quality of this institution from which this applicant has graduated and now wants to study at my university, right? When I was living abroad, when I was living in Spain, China and so on, I would frequently get calls from the admissions departments and they would say, uh, Rama, I've received, we received this application from this Indian student from this university in India. Uh, would you be able to tell us, you know, uh, whether this is a good quality institution or not? And I would do some research sometimes, you know, sometimes even I had not heard of the, of the university in India and I would do some research and of course, I would, I would give them the input. Uh, with institutions like IIT or uh, even uh, the Indian Institute of Science, uh, most top institutions in the world, they have no doubt whatsoever that the quality of the graduates is exceptional, right? Uh, but for a new university, you know, such as uh, Mahindra, which is only about seven years old with its School of Engineering, to place its graduates in such top institutions gives you an indication of the kind of quality education that we are pursuing here, right? And uh, the, uh, our graduates, engineering graduates have also gotten into the top Indian institutions, such as IIT Delhi, ISC, Bangalore, IIIT Hyderabad, Nikmar, et cetera, for higher studies. Um, what are the employment roles, as I said, you know, for uh, uh, CBA graduates? Those would be business analysts, data analysts, research analysts and consultants. And what are the companies that are hiring these people? Uh, analytics companies, so there are broadly speaking, I would say three types of companies that are doing amazing work in analytics for their clients, right? So one category is uh, of course the large information technology and information technology enabled services companies such as, as I said, TCS, Infosys, Wipro, Cognizant, TechMindra, et cetera, but also multinational companies such as Accenture, IBM Global Services, and so on, KPMG, Pricewaterhouse. Uh, the second category, uh, in India, you have a large number of specialized analytics companies, such as Mu Sigma, Fractal Analytics, Latin View Analytics. So we have good connections with these organizations and we've been talking to them already. Uh, so these, you know, uh, mid-sized, I would call them mid-sized companies, uh, they employ, you know, between 200 and 10,000 people. I think the biggest one employs about three and a half to 4,000 uh, people. And then you have a large number of startups that are either, you know, offering solutions based on analytics or using analytics for their own operations. And those would be go from between one to 200 employees. So analytics companies, you know, fall in this broad spectrum, right? One of the largest employers of analytics graduates is the banking, financial services and insurance industry, PFSI. Consulting companies, as I said earlier, are hiring graduates, analytics graduates. Academic institutions are hiring them as research assistants, the same with research institutes. E-commerce companies, for example, e-commerce analytics is a very big, very, very big field and manufacturing companies and startup companies. And we have some concrete data on the, 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 the employment opportunities, right? In the 2019-2020 uh, financial year, 25,500 fresh graduates were hired, analytics graduates were hired in India. And 41% of the employees in the industry has less than five years of work experience. So I spoke to you about the skills portfolio. So there will be a core skills that you will graduate with, you know, knowledge of analytics, knowledge of um, AI, machine learning, and so on, but also specific tools such as knowledge of Python, R, Tableau, which is a data visualization tool, 
<coughs> and you'll have a lot of supplementary skills like the ability to do statistical analysis and so on, financial analysis, strategic analysis, the ability to um, bring up, you know, uh, the relevant data from a large database using tools such as SQL. So one of the most important messages for you today from me is that we will be organizing a number of uh, events between now and uh, September, um, which will be very informative for you, whether you join us or not, right? We'll be bringing in top-notch speakers to talk about these topics. We'll be uh, bringing in uh, top-notch speakers to talk about employment prospects uh, and we'll be we'll also be you know talking about general problem solving uh, tools so for example the very first event that we're organizing is on the 10th of july i encourage you to connect to our social media platforms uh, you will receive information about it i'll be interviewing one of my former students actually he is one of the leading authorities in the world on critical thinking and problem solving. So he's published a book. I think it's published by Harvard Business School Publishing. It's called What's Your Problem? And he says that, you know, solving the right problem, you know, is half the battle in problem solving. Uh, he has also published articles in the Harvard Business Review, and he's an advisor to the largest companies in the world. Okay. His name is Thomas Weddell, and I'll be doing the interview on the 10th of July at 6.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Um, the interview will last about an hour. But it's very important for you to, um, to follow us on our social media. We have Instagram, Facebook, and we have a dedicated LinkedIn page. Please follow us on LinkedIn also. I'm happy to take your questions now. Uh, let me see. Uh, what are higher studies options available for a BBA graduate? So you could do um, a master's in analytics. Uh, you know, um, uh, an MBA, of course, you could do an MBA without any problem. Uh, you could do a master's in finance because uh, you'll be doing a number of finance courses. So it's, it's quite easy for you to do a master's in finance. You could do a master's in accounting. Uh, you could do, uh, so MBA, master's in finance, master's in accounting, uh, master's in international business, uh, and of course, a master's in analytics. Another question, when can I apply for this program? You can apply immediately. Please go to our webpage, mahindrauniversity.edu.in, mahindrauniversity.edu.in, and in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a big red, red button, which will say, apply now. Click on it, and an online form will open. We don't ask for a lot of information from you. I think you should be able to fill out this form in less than 10 minutes. Okay. We, uh, because this is our first year, we insist on interviewing every single shortlisted applicant. So you will have to go through an interview um, with me, with uh, our professor of marketing, uh, professor of data science, and the interview is also attended by the vice chancellor of the university, Professor Meduri, and the dean of the School of Engineering, Professor Vishnupal. So, uh, four to five members uh, of the leadership of the school, of the of the university and the school, will be doing the interview. So, I'm selected in the interview last Saturday. Now, I had some questions for you personally. What should I do? So, if you have questions for me personally please get in touch with our admissions team and you can, we will schedule uh, 
you know, an interaction with you to answer all your questions. Uh, very happy to interact with you for 15, 20 minutes to answer your questions. There was a question here, uh, is mathematics at plus two necessary to do the computational business analytics program? The answer is yes. You must have mathematics in your plus two. If you don't have mathematics in plus two, we have another excellent program, which is less intensive in mathematics and quant, which is the BBA in digital marketing. It's an excellent program. Think about doing that. Okay. But if you if you have mathematics, please consider either the BA in economics and finance or the BBA in computational business analytics. How will the three weeks in Cornell be good for us? Well, you know, in, in a number of different ways, right? I've been doing uh, student immersions for many, many years now. Uh, I've been a teacher now for what, uh, almost 28 years. And uh, the, the very exposure to another country, to a top institution in another country, to teachers from another country, and to the environment of that university will be eye-opening for you at a very basic level, right? Second, we have a, a three-week immersion. So there'll be 15 days of classes, and on every day you will have three hours of classes, right? Taught by Cornell faculty. So we're looking at 45 hours of instruction. So this is a four credit immersion. You're not just going on a, on a tourist visit there, right? We'll make you work really hard. You'll have to take courses. And there will be, in addition to the 45 hours of in-class interaction with a faculty member, you will have both individual projects and team projects that you have to deliver. And you'll be graded for it, right? So, and we are going to be selecting some very, very interesting topics for you to study in your Cornell immersion. That's going to be finalized in the coming couple of weeks. Uh, and of course, you know, most of the three weeks will be spent in Ithaca, on, in the main campus of Cornell University. Toward the end of your stay, we are planning to take you to New York City, where Cornell Tech's campus is located in the Roosevelt Island. And you'll be able to spend a couple of days there and get a feel for New York City. Uh, is this a residential program? And, uh, you can be a day scholar if you want to be. So uh, this is res uh, on-campus residence is not mandatory for the School of Management program. So if you want to stay, or if you if you are from Hyderabad and you want to commute to the university every single day, that's perfectly fine. What is your core competence in engineering courses? Well, we have 70 engineering faculty. I encourage you to actually go and look them up. Go to the School of Engineering faculty, Echo Central School of Engineering faculty. Look at their profiles. Look at where they got their PhDs from. Look at the journals that which they are publish, publishing. And look at their academic credentials generally. I'm, I'm not seeing, I'm only seeing one question at a time. What is the fee structure? So for this program, we have set the fee at three lakhs per annum, excluding accommodation and food, and excluding the immersion in Cornell. We have uh, scholarships of 25% um, for the top 20% uh, percent of applicants. What are the sports facilities of, offered by the school? I can actually show you some photographs. Um, we have, as I said, a 100 plus acre campus. I'm actually staying on campus now. It's beautiful, it's green. We have, uh, on campus, we have three tennis courts, one hard court and two clay courts. We have um, a, a volleyball court. We have a basketball court. We have three indoor badminton courts. We have uh, table tennis and pools tables. Um, what else do we have? Um, and you have space to, we have a, a, a huge field where you can, it's a full-fledged football pitch. And on that field, you can also play cricket because there's a strip in the middle that can be used as a pitch where you can roll out a mat. 
So, I mean, in terms of sports facilities, I would say we are one of the best equipped in India. It's it's a very gorgeous campus, and you love the, the you love studying here. Uh, and I would like you to you know see it for yourself if you can. Okay, uh, I think uh, our student uh, our admissions team will uh, show you around. Uh, so the question is in a student exchange program. Uh, so the Cornell immersion is not strictly an exchange program. We take our students to Cornell for an immersion. Okay, and we are hosted by Cornell University. Our students are taught by Cornell faculty. There will be one or two um, Mahindra University School of Management faculty accompanying you, uh, but um, the, the courses will be taught by Cornell faculty. You will stay on the Cornell campus, Cornell University campus. Uh, you'll have your meals there, um, and you'll be able to use the facilities of Cornell University and the library and everything, right? More cool, yeah. Uh, I'm sure there are webinars for the engineering courses. Uh, I will ask our, our admissions team to inform you about that. So there is a question here. Is there a, any webinar for engineering courses in your team institute? Uh, our, uh, our admissions team will give you the information. Does this course offer international study also? Yes, it offers you the opportunity of studying at Cornell University and we do build, do plan to build partnerships with other leading institutions in other parts of the world. For example, um, I am in discussions with the Frankfurt School of Finance and Management, which is in Germany. I have very good connections there. I'm a visiting professor there. And we could also explore partnerships with universities in Southeast Asia, such as Singapore. Campus visit is possible. Please get in touch with our campus visit is not only possible, it's encouraged. So uh, if you uh, can get in touch with uh, our admissions team, they will organize it for you. And if I'm on campus, I would very much welcome the opportunity of interacting with you and your parents if you come with your parents. Can you give me the mail? Uh, Mahindra, could uh, Ritesh or Arshu, could you please write the uh, Mahindra University admissions email in the in this box here, please? Sure, sir. Sure. sure. Yeah. So, so, so our admissions team is going to write the our email address so that you can contact us. Uh, let me see. Can you give me? Okay. Can you predict the range of package if I pursue a BBA at the Mahindra Institute? I don't know because in three years' time, we don't know what the packages are going to be like. Uh, just to give you an idea, our 2020 engineering graduates, uh, their um, average CTC was 7.5 lakhs, the BTEC uh, graduates. And the highest package, I think, was about 45 lakhs. But I can assure you that uh, the analytics graduates are going to be in very high demand and you don't need to worry about employability. How to apply, please guide. Uh, the admissions team, could you please get in touch with this person, with Bhaskar? Um, as I said, go to mahindrauniversity.edu.in and you'll see an apply now button, click on that and fill in your details. <clears throat> yes, there is a, the, so the question is, in Bahindra University, is there a BBA in digital marketing? There's a BBA in digital technologies in which you will have multiple courses on digital marketing. So if you're interested in digital marketing, I strongly urge you to take the BBA in digital technologies. Is there an entrance exam uh, for for the for this course? No, uh, we don't require an entrance program. Although, if you have SAT scores, 
or the Pearson View Scores, P E A R S O N V U E, Pearson View Scores. We would accept them gladly. Um, but we've made many admissions decisions already based on your 10th standard results, your 11th standard results, and uh, your pre board results in 12th and your predicted uh, results in your 12th exam. Let me just write the, the web, web page, Mahindra University.edu.in. You go to that and then you uh, click on apply now. There are schools, you can go to the School of Management uh, and then click apply now. There is somebody asking me, if I remember them. Let me see, I'm just looking for the questions. Ritesh, many questions about the email. So is it admissions at mahindrauniversity.edu.in? Ritesh? Sir, I am answering. Sir, I have given them answer, and it is oh. actually admissions at the red Mahindra University. Video. In. I write there. Fantastic. Did you remember me, sir, Shiva? Ah, uh, Shiva Shankar. Yes, of course, I remember you very well, Shiva Shankar. Uh, yes, you you studied in Narayana. Last Saturday, you had some questions, okay? I had some questions for you personally. What shall I do? So, as I said, you get in touch with an admissions team. It's very easy for them to arrange, you know, a Zoom call with me and I'll be very happy to answer your questions. I've already answered this question about mathematics being compulsory. So I think we've answered all the questions. There's a question here. I think people, somebody wants to know if, if, the, if, the, if the degree is going to be recognized by foreign universities. So, you know, my, as I said, Mahindra University is already recognized by the top universities in the world and uh, because of our very close collaboration with Cornell and the other quality elements that we are putting in place, you will have no difficulty in being accepted in for a master's program or a PhD program. Now, you will have to do well, obviously, in order to be, uh, in order to be accepted. So you must do well in your courses and get a good uh, CGPA. And if you do that, then I think there's not going to be any problem. Any more questions, Ritesh, that I have not seen? Uh, Ashu? Sir, you answered all of them. Okay. So I'm happy to, to wait, if the, just, to, just in case there are more questions. If there are no more questions, then we can, we can conclude the webinar. I leave it to you. But my general message to all of you who are attending this webinar is, you know, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We are here to answer them. And I will personally answer your questions, very happy to answer your questions, either through Zoom or through email. But please get in touch with the admissions team. They will convey your questions to me. Or, and they will arrange a, a you know, face-to-face -face interview on Zoom or uh, on the phone. A one-on-one -on -one interview, I meant. Ritesh, Ashu? Sir, it is, uh, you, have answered, uh, you have answered almost every question, sir. And we also write down at the back end. They've got personal messages as well, sir. 